بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله هنتكلم عن الفيتال لانج ماتيوريتي دايجنوستيك دايلما with practical point of view because we have in the literature many many articles on the how to detect the fetal lung maturity uh, but we want a practical point because when we do an ultrasound for a case uh, we have to reach this in limited uh, time um, so I will uh, screen first what are the uh, the different modalities to reach the fetal lung, to, uh, diagnosis of fetal lung maturity uh, fetal lung maturity is vital to the survival rate of neonates. Neonatal respiratory distress syndrome uh, and associated complications account for 28% of neonatal deaths. Neonatal respiratory distress syndrome results specifically from a deficiency in pulmonary surfactant, resulting in lungs that are developmentally immature and prone to collapse. Although the wide use of glucocorticoids uh, has decreased the incidence of neonatal respiratory distress syndrome, uh, 10% still will develop the syndrome. Accurate pre-delivery assessment of the fetal lung maturity, especially in high-risk pregnancies, uh, those who ha we have to do elective cesarean section, for example, is critical to improving the neonatal survival rate. We have several antenatal tests have been developed in an effort to predict the likelihood of fetal lung maturity, like the lysis and sphingomyelin ratio. Uh, um, many of the tests that necessitates amniocentesis, which is an invasive procedure. Yet they do have a, a do not have a reliable predictive value, especially in late gestation, and are invasive because they are they re are requiring amniocentesis. So in contrast, ultrasound examination is non-invasive and widely available for pregnant women. The normal fetal chest, here, here is the normal fetal chest. It is rounded or oval with the ribs surrounding more than half of the circumference of the chest. A proportional growth of the fetal chest, lungs and heart is seen with preservation of the cardiothoracic ratio throughout gestational age. But first, in the early gestational age, the lungs appear hypoechoic compared with the liver parenchyma, and then with advanced age, the fetal lungs become more fluid-filled, which, which results in increasing its echogenicity. This is a long list that we can use to detect fetal lung maturity. First, the placental grading. Placenta grade 3 is usually associated with mature lung, and usually, uh, and many, many researches have been done, if you search the literature, they found that placenta grade 3 is usually associated with mature lung. Second, the amniotic fluid free-floating particles. If the length of these particles more than 5 mm, then uh, it is with placent, uh, lung maturity. The bowel echogenicity, grade 3 colon, echogenicity of the bowel reaching that of the liver, means that uh, or indicates fetal lung maturity. The fetal epiphyseal ossification center. The most common is the distal femoral epiphysis that we have. We always see the distal femoral epiphysis uh, less than or more up to one millimeter than the proximal tibial epiphysis. The distal femoral epiphysis and the proximal tibial epiphysis combined lengths more than 11 millimeter. If you measure the distal femoral epiphysis and the proximal tibial epiphysis combined lens more than 11 mm, and when you find that the proximal humeral epiphysis is present. Uh, we, we have to, يعني, we used to uh, see the distal femoral epiphysis, and usually this epiphysis be um, 3 to 6 mm in diameter. Then came the lung liver echogenicity ratio, and this is very important. If we, uh, we, we will see how we can measure the echogenicity in a number, but most of cases we do it subjectively when we see that the lungs are more echogenic than the liver. The kidney lens is one of the parameters. If it is more than 4 cm, it means that the, the fetal, uh, fetus is mature. Increase the salamic echogenicity and fetal pulmonary artery doubler, we measure the acceleration and ejection time with, with cut-off value more than or equal 0.3 uh, 
0.3. So this is a, a, a great list of assessment of the fetal lung maturity. Uh, first, placental grading. This is placenta grade 3. How we found the placenta grade 3? Where we found here the calcification is seen passing from the chorionic surface to the basal surface of the placenta with basal calcification. The cotyledons are as if they are drawn by this calcification. So this is grade 3 placental maturity. Then the amniotic fluid floating particles. Not all particles, you, you see here, this is turbi turbidity. Sometimes we see turbid fluid just due to the fetal movement because this uh, amniotic fluid is not clear fluid. It contains particles all the time throughout gestation. But we found these particles, more than 5 millimeter here, this is floating echogenic particles, mean that this fetus has well-developed vernix and hair and there is shedded particles in the amniotic fluid. So this is what is meant by the free floating particles, or that we used to say in our reports, turbid like. Then the bowel echogenicity. Here, this is the echogenicity of the bowel. The house truck is well developed, and the colon is uh, filled by meconium, and it is similar to the echogenicity of the liver. So this is what is mean, it is grade 3 bowel echogenicity that it contains meconium and this meconium is near to the liver echogenicity. Uh, the, the most important way that I depend on in my practical work is the lung expansion and the lung eco pattern which is the increased echogenicity as we have said. How we can determine the lung expansion? Note here in this fetus, There is good respiratory movement. This is the diaphragm, this is the liver, and this is the lung. Note the difference in echogenicity is outstanding, even if we did not measure by the, the measure that I will say later in the, in the lecture. So here, this is the lung, and this is the liver, more echogenic than the liver. And then when you see the chest, here the chest with the abdomen are in one line. So here the chest is good expanding chest. This is the uh, thymid gland and the atria, atrium, and this is the thymus. And this is the lung. So this is how the lung are perfectly expanding in this fetus. To compare, this is another fetus where the chest is narrow. It is dumbbell shaped. Note here, it is dumbbell-shaped chest. So this is a hypoplastic lung. And this was a case of phacomelia where we can see how the lung is, and, and usually this baby died from the hypoplastic lung. So this lung is not mature. This is the liver. And even the lung here, we could not see. Yani this is the, the narrow, very narrow chest cage. And here, this is the thymic gland, but hardly you can see a lung. Again, this is the normal expanding chest, and this is the small hypoplastic lung. This also. Here is the same case. Note how the chest cage is very small in size. The heart, more than half the chest circumference. The lung here is more than half the chest circumference, while the abdominal uh, circumference is good. Here the abdominal circumference and this is the chest. This is what means that the chest, this is a hypoplastic lung pathological, but sometimes when the lung is not expanding, we find a narrow chest as regard to the abdominal, uh, abdominal circumference. This is the abdominal circumference and this is the narrow chest. Uh, then to, to the more advanced and sophisticated examination by the 3D. By the 3D, when the machine contains the vocal software, we can detect on multiple slices using the 3D and we can calculate the, vo the lung volume. And this is very important. 
I said that I usually do this subjectively when I found the thoracic cage expanding comparable to the abdominal uh, circumference. But using the, the 3D vo uh, volume, lung volume, using vocab, is very precise because we can detect the lung volume corresponding to the age. Is there uh, tables to that? Yes, yes, there is, there is tables to the lung volume. Here is the volume of the right lung compared with the gestational age. And this is the, um, the volume in cubic centimeter. And here is the left lung. This is the right lung and this is the left lung. This is by curve. And also there is um, many articles we found that they put the uh, lung volume regarding the gestational age, regarding from the 2.5 percentile to the 97th percentile. So there is a very, very wide range according to the gestational age. And usually they do this up to 34 weeks because after 34 weeks, usually the lung starts to be mature. And after 37 weeks, usually the lung are mature. And we have to look uh, for these uh, for uh, for other signs that we have stated before. What is the flare? Flare is the fetal lung liver intensity ratio. This is to measure the the liver lung ra ratio, but not um, but objectively, not subjectively. Yeah, and subjectively, I see that the liver is uh, is the lung is more brighter than the liver. But someone say no, it's so bright. Um, it's nearly the same, so to, to cut it off, we can do this using a measure. Uh, in the early stages of pregnancy, the echo density results of the lung are less intense than those of the liver, and then starting from the 31 to 33 weeks, the echo of the fetal lung become coarser and brighter, while the echo of the fetal liver undergo little change, so there will be a difference between the fetal lung and the fetal liver. The fetal lung liver intensity ratio become more than 1.1 after 34 uh, weeks gestational uh, age and on a statistical analysis that this, this density or this ratio uh, is correlated positively with the gestational age. How we measure this as we see here in this um, slide, here this is the lung and this is the liver and we put a one and we measure the ratio between both. As if we measure the density in CT, for example. So we put here and we measure the density and here we measure and then we calculate the ratio. The ratio in this case is 1.5, so it's fine. In this case, the lung echogenicity, of course, subjectively you can see that it is more echogenic than the liver. But in order to be precise, they do this measure, which is called the flare or the fetal uh, liver lung ratio. This case is immature. See here, they are nearly the similar echogenicity, but may someone say it's appear a little bit uh, echogenic, so we have to measure. So when we measure, we found it is less than one. So here it is immature lung. Then came the pulmonary artery, uh, the main pulmonary artery doubler, and this was investigated uh, many times. Uh, investigate the effect of increasing gestational age on the Doppler waveform in the main pulmonary artery. Um, uh, fee analysis of many of the Doppler variables, fee fee some of the Doppler variables increased significantly with gestational age, uh, mainly the acceleration time and the ejection time ratio, but also the peak systolic velocity, the end diastolic velocity, and the mean velocity uh, increased with gestational age. A pulsatility index decreased with increasing gestational age, and the ejection time and RI do not change significantly throughout the gestational age. Uh, this is the, main, the normal wave in the main pulmonary artery. This is the normal wave in the main pulmonary artery. Uh, it's, it's nearly a double peak like this, and here we have the peak systolic velocity, um, and we have here the time velocity integral, this part, and the T is the whole cycle, is the whole cycle of the wave, and this is the diastolic velocity. Uh, and then we have also the acceleration time and the ejection time. This is the parameters that we use to measure in the, in the main pulmonary artery doubler.
In main pulmonary artery Doppler, here we have a case where the PI is 2.2, the RI 0.8, and the um, acceleration time on the ejection time 0.84, and this means it's a, a good mature fetus. This is another case. In here, the ejection time is low, ratio is low, so this is an immature fetus regarding the Doppler uh, indices. And this study was carried by Dr. Yasmin Assam, she's lecturer of radiology in Cairo University. Uh, and in, in her study, they show that there is a strong correlation between the main pulmonary artery, PI, RI, and uh, acceleration time on the ejection time with the uh, decreased the development when, when it is, uh, this correlation is good with those developing respiratory distress syndrome and those without respiratory distress syndrome. And uh, in this study, there was cut-off value for each. Uh, if the main pulmonary artery PI 2.3 to diagnose between immature lung and, um, uh, and mature lung, uh, also the RI and the um, acceleration time on the ejection time ratio. But still, it's very difficult to detect the main pulmonary artery, especially in late pregnancy, because sometimes the ribs are well ossified, the position of the, of the fetus, we could not get it well. Uh, so although it is very specific, but practically, in practical working, it's difficult to get. Uh, this means that fetus that develop respiratory stress syndrome have higher pulmonary vascular resistance, higher pressure, and low pulmonary art, uh, uh, and the low pulmonary blood flow. When compared with fetuses, they do not have respiratory stress syndrome. Uh, and she has uh, uh, another observation in this uh, research that we found that those who take steroid intake, they sh show that it enhances the maturity of the lung, and many of them do not develop respiratory distress syndrome. Uh, and there is significant um, increase in the uh, during taking uh, during taking steroids, there will be significant increase in the main pulmonary artery PI, RI, and acceleration time, ejection time ratio, and also in the uh, signal um, in the echogenicity of the lung. Okay, then we will have some cases to see how we manage practically. We say from the literature most of the uh, items that we could fulfill. We must correlate all this that we have said with the fetal biometry, the fetal biophysical profile, and the fetal Doppler. Because if we have the lung borderline and we find that it is not well, well mature, you must do Doppler. If the Doppler is good, the amniotic fluid is normal, and the biophysical profile is normal, then better to wait to get more developed lung. And the baby can take uh, the, the mother can take corticosteroids in order for in order to check for more maturity of the lung. Um, this case was sent 37 weeks, and her her doctor sent for fetal lung maturity for elective uh, cesarean section. Uh, we will take the parameters that we have said before. In this case, first regarding the placental maturity. It is grade 3 placenta. The, here there, there is the cotyledons seen and the calcifications that start from the chorionic plate to the basal uh, layer of the placenta. So we have here grade 3 placental maturity. Okay. Then here we have the lung liver ratio. That's what I, I say to you, that the, the ribs sometimes, uh, this baby is uh, occipital anterior. And the ribs show much shadowing here, that we have to get to and through in order to see the echogenicity of the lung, and more difficult to get the main pulmonary artery doppler. Here is the lung. The chest is well expanding. And here is the echogenicity of the lung and liver, and here the lung is more echogenic than the liver. And this is the sign that I have to tell you, good expansion of the chest, good expansion of the chest. Then, 
something that I have not said because it's not so much written in the literature is the arterial perfusion of the lung. Here when we see the perfusion of the lung, we found that the vessels pass to the to the to, uh, to the third to the outer third of the lung so there is well perfusion and this well perfusion you will see it only in the um, um, mature lungs the expanded mature lungs okay again moving ecogenic particles here is the moving ecogenic particles and when we measure one of these particles it is 0.5 so it's good index for fetal maturity moving ecogenic particles and then as I, as I told you the amniotic fluid index is good and the biophysical profile is very good the patient in the 50th percentile or 56th percentile and everything is very good so, we are towards that we have good fetal lung maturity, good fetal movement, no IUGR, um, uh, no gross restricted fetus, so all is, is very good. So, you have to take all the parameters, not only start to search on the fetal maturity uh, in specific. Then came the Doppler, and this is also a normal Doppler. Here the RI and PI are normal within the umbilical artery and this is the middle cerebral artery sh showing RI.8. So we have normal Doppler indices, normal biophysical profile, normal uh, amniotic fluid index. Then um, then this case I wrote it that it's good fetal lung maturity and sent for her obstetrician to, um, uh, to book her whatever he wants. Then here, the, another case, this case was sent as being both date, it's nice boy fetus, uh, and here, when we do the, um, bio, uh, the biometry, we found that it's very small on date, but I think it's only miscalculation, because um, the baby was very good, I will see you all the indices of the baby, all is very good. So I, I thought that the mother has miscalculation, although she's insisting that she know the period well, um, but um, uh, this, um, I didn't um, see that here, there is nearly one month lagging. Regarding the lungs, beautifully mature lungs, here the lung is, the, the chest is expanding, the lung ecogenicity is more than the liver. So we have here good lung maturity. Note here the expansion of the chest. It is comparable to the abdominal circumference. And here we can see that the lungs are hyper than the liver. And uh, we found the, uh, the, the normal ratio between the heart, the, car, the heart and the chest. Uh, then came here also the placenta. It's also grade 3, or starting to be grade 3 maturity. And here is the moving ecogenic particles. And then here also is the ossific center of the um, distal femur, distal femoral epiphysis. This is the ossific center. So it's good enough. And also the colonic haustra are well developed. With the ecogenicity is not so near to the liver, but it's about to be near to the liver with the ecogenicity of the meconium within the colonic uh, parts. Then came also to the doubler, nice doubler. Here, this is the RI in the umbilical artery 0.5 and the, and the PI 0.76, while the RI in the middle, in the middle cerebral artery 0.86, which is normal ratio of the cerebral um, a placenta ratio 
Uh, and here also is the, <coughs> here I tried to get the uh, main pulmonary artery uh, doubler, and it is also with normal range uh, regarding the fetal maturity. Another case, what you can say, it's normal, expanding chest, good respiratory movement, echogenicity of the lung to the liver is higher, but يعني, in this case, it's not so much high. يعني, here, there is a difference, but not so much high. In that case, when if we can use the flare uh, to measure the ratio between the, the lung and liver, it will be better, of course. And this is the ossific center in the distal femur. And this is the placenta is not grade 3. The placenta here is not grade 3. But here the mother is very good. And I think we can wait and see because I think she is miscalculation. And I wrote that in the report that I think she, it is miscalculation rather than um, small for date uh, fetus or uh, gross restricted fetus. The kidney lens, how to measure the kidney lens. And here the biophysical profile is uh, in this case, uh, this is the, the, the third case. In this third case, uh, she's overweight. She, she's overweight, but here it is 38 weeks. I asked the patient if she's diabetic, but she said no. So here the problem is the, the large for date fetus, not small for date uh, fetus. And so uh, she may um, be a, a, a case for a cesarean section, um, but the lungs are mature, and yani he can do cesarean section if he want any time. The doubler is okay. This is the, although there is a notch here, and the, some articles comment on the notch in the umbilical artery, but the uh, RI and PI are good and normal, and this is the middle cerebral artery doubler, normal or of of course. Okay. If there are other modalities, yes, fetal MRI can do also, we can do assessment of the fetal lung maturity by fetal MRI. The fetal lungs are homogeneous and hyper intense compared with muscles on MRI. They show an increase in signal intensity after 24 weeks of gestation, and this increase in signal resulting from the increased amount of fluid present in the lung parenchyma as the alveoli develop. Uh, we can use both T1 weighted image and T2 weighted image aid in the differentiation of normal lung parenchyma and adjacent structures such as the mediastinum, the liver, and bowel. The lungs are hyper intense compared to the liver and spleen on T2 weighted image. This is hyper intense lung compared to the liver and spleen, and it is a sign of fetal <coughs> lung maturity. And so also the lung expansion, as we, as I say, in ultrasound. <coughs> this is the fetal lung volume, as we measure by MRI. Same as ultrasound, we can take many slices and add them in the end to calculate the fetal lung volume. Uh, and this is the increased signal uh, intensity in all T2 weighted sequence and on flare image, and decreasing signal on T1 decreasing signal on T1 uh, weighted image. So the signals are increasing <coughs> on T2 weighted images and the other sequences and become decreasing on T2 weighted images. And also you know, a sign of maturity is the distended colon with meconium which is also a sign of maturity in late stage here in 36 weeks. Thank you. Hope that the opinion uh, reach you, um, but no, no, nothing is 100%. So we have to uh, uh, take care to see all the parameters in order to assess for the fetal lung maturity. Thank you.